Control Center didn't always look like this. Let's go back to where it all began. The Control Center first appeared in 2013 alongside iOS 7. It was a major change because for the first time, users could quickly access essential functions like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, the flashlight, and music controls with a simple swipe up from the bottom of the screen. The design was completely new, flat, translucent, and minimalist, marking the transition from the classic skeuomorphic style to the modern design language introduced by Apple under Joni Ives' direction. In iOS 7.1, Apple added a bounce animation, and the sliders for brightness and volume could now be flicked with a quick gesture. This update also introduced text showing which app was currently playing media. With iOS 8, the design was refined, the dividing lines between buttons disappeared, and when you pressed a control, the icon turned solid white without an outline. In iOS 9, Apple changed the system font, and in version 9.3, introduced the night shift toggle, which automatically adjusted the display's color temperature based on the time of day. The real structural change came with iOS 10. Control Center received a complete redesign, with more saturated colors, square buttons, and a two-page layout one for quick actions and another for media controls. In iOS 11, Apple changed everything again. Since the iPhone X removed the home button, Apple had to introduce a new way to access Control Center by swiping down from the top right corner of the screen. It also returned to a single page layout, now with a modular design made up of independent tiles. For the first time, customization was introduced, allowing users to add, remove, or rearrange functions directly from the settings app. Using 3D touch or a long press, each button could reveal additional options. Also in iOS 11.2, Apple added a new visual effect when disabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, along with an explanatory pop-up, since these toggles no longer fully turned off but only temporarily disconnected instead. Want more videos like this? Then hit the new hype button and help us grow this community. It's free, and it helps us a lot. Thank you. In iOS 13, Apple introduced dark mode and a dedicated toggle for it along with visual updates for the brightness, true tone, and night shift sliders. iOS 14 added even more functionality, sleep tracking, sound recognition, an NFC tag reader, and a built-in Shazam control directly in Control Center. Dynamic controls for HomeKit devices were also added. In iOS 15, the classic Do Not Disturb button was replaced with the new Focus Mode, offering four preset options, Work, Sleep, Personal, and Do Not Disturb. At the same time, new quick controls were introduced as well, such as text size, video effects, and mic mode. With iOS 16, Apple refined the overall aesthetics once again, introducing a redesigned battery icon, a new Quick Notes button, and full Shazam integration. Then, with iOS 18, Apple completely rebuilt the control center from the ground up. It now features circular buttons, rounded corners, and multiple vertical pages for different categories, connectivity, media, smart home, or user favorites. For the first time, each control can be resized and rearranged using a wiggle mode, similar to editing icons on the home screen. A new plus button lets you add more toggles, including third-party app controls, removing the need to open settings. Later updates brought even more polish. iOS 18.1 introduced redesigned connectivity buttons. iOS 18.4 added new Apple intelligence toggles, and the brightness and volume sliders gained smoother animations. Finally, with iOS 26, Apple introduced a brand new visual language called Liquid Glass, with rounder sliders, a more organic look, and a subtle depth effect around the controls. To me, it feels like the most elegant interpretation of the control center yet. What do you think? If you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and if you give us a like and leave a comment, it really helps us out. Thank you.